Okay, I've been promising this one for a while. This is my mallet wrapping video. Uh, it's literally two years in the making. This is for students that want to get extra life out of their mallets. This is for band teachers that need to get uh, extra life out of mallets, as well as general music educators. This is a great skill that will keep your mallets playing longer. So um, we're going to redo these. They're uh, Right now they're a bit harsh sounding, uh, particularly on my marimba, um, which is a very dead sounding marimba. I'm going to cut that uh, footage in here. So supplies you are going to need. Supplies is uh, some yarn. Some people are really hardcore about trying to find all wool. Uh, they say that nylon adds a tick to the sound. Just find whatever's gonna work for you. Um, I'm using this kind of cool uh, black, white, and gray pattern. This was a multi-color clown color uh, before here, and I'm uh, replacing it with, with this stuff. Uh, so that's what you're gonna need. Uh, if you wanna get a second color for the crown and foot, I've got a thinner black and white cord kind of going uh, around the uh, crown and foot there. Of course, it will be better hidden if it's the same color. It basically disappears if you do the same color. A pair of uh, scissors that you would pick up there. You don't have to if you've got any old scissors lying around. Um, the tiny ones are kind of nice because it's a small string and it just, you know, seems to help in the long run. As long as you can cut the string, you're fine. Get yourself some needles. You want to find something with a fairly big eye uh, and a fairly big, uh, you know, needle itself. First steps, uh, taking the old yarn off if you haven't already, and you can just you can just cut that off, you know. Of course, I will be speeding up these sections where I am just kind of rotely doing things because you don't need to see me cut every single one of these. That's a really boring video. There you got it, down to the regular plastic or rubber heads that they have. Um, you know, you'll find different shapes for different types of mallets. I'm gonna go quick uh, play these just as normal on my marimba so that you can hear them as well. There will be different shapes of the mallet head that you will find. Uh, a more round circular one like this will cause a more bulbous kind of head. There's a kind of like a truncated uh, version that creates more of that uh, diamond shape in it. And then an even more round will make an even larger round sphere around it. The shape of the mallet head will have a lot to do with the shape of the yarn on the outside, though they're not necessarily similar shapes. First step is you want to wrap around the outside edge of the mallet. Um, like this, so you go that direction. This is the only place where I count. Some people are very big on counting. They wanna have the exact amount of, of loops around. I am more worried about the out overall size uh, and sound comparison. I usually go like, I try to go for 10, but sometimes they like to slip off before that, depending on the size of the mallet head. I forget how easy these ones were. So, uh, you know, I'll be at least five and they will slip off a lot of times. See, that one just slipped off. So it, it, gets, it gets tough. That's looking pretty thick. Uh, that's seven. Again, you can certainly go more or less. Once they start, they tend to stay on, uh, a, you know, easier. So, you know, the first couple are hard to get. All right, at this point, what you do is you start to spin it under and try and take it up over the top. And again, if you were gonna start counting, that would be one, this would be two. And you just kind of go around, try and cross over directly over the center. Try and hold this very tight, okay? Like, and try and meter how hard you're holding it so that you can continue to hold it as you go, okay? Uh, so that you keep a consistent tension, consistent tension as you go. And then just slowly start to fill in the gaps. Uh, it's important to not just loop in one section because you will start to see that start to uh, kind of push towards one side. So you really do want to move around a lot. Don't just kind of fill in like right next to each other. Uh, you want to kind of go across, you know, sort of uh, in snare drum tuning style uh, as much as, as possible. Try to always go directly over the top going into the point that forms where all the pieces cross. Try and keep that as centered to the top of the mallet as possible. Try and let it not come off the side. 
Sometimes it shifts around a little bit. There's a slight amount of adjustment you can do at the end to kind of pull it back into place. But in general, the more direct over center you are, the better. And sometimes you lose one. That one kind of slipped off. It was not centered well. And I'm pulling others off just kind of tighten up and readjust. It's okay. The more of a point you get, the easier it is for those parts to slip off. And that's going to be one of those things that's really going to hold you back in the beginning, is that there's a lot of those that slip off and, and you know, you just want to make sure you get them as much as you can over the top. Now I know I'm going to want more than I have on here right now. I know it looks like it's starting to really shape up, but there's not a whole lot on there. Uh, I want probably at least twice as much as what I have right now because I want a big soft mallet. This would work. It's going to sound like a, a hard mallet though, so I want to make this to, you know, be a little softer for, for my needs. Uh, certainly adjust and certainly get up and go test. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because, well, I, I know I want to go a little further, but uh, we will test these before we finish them. So. And again, as you go, try and fill all the gaps, right? Look for the spots that look like they're a bit thin. Occasionally, I kind of try and readjust some. You gotta hold really tight if you're gonna push one up towards the top. You gotta be careful, because you can make it unravel. Again, the best part though, is, you know, the best part about making anything is that, you know, you do get to do it again. Sometimes that's not fun, but, you know, you know the process, so you can go back in and fix things. Not a, not a big deal. And again, expect your first couple mallet wraps to not be all that great. That's, that's really standard, you know? It takes a while to get okay at it. And again, I would say even though I've wrapped, I don't know, 20, 30 pairs of mallets, which again, isn't, isn't a lot, you know? Uh, the ones now are certainly way better than the first five, you know? And uh, you get better at it every time you do it. In fact, for college students out there that are spending lots of money on really nice mallets, a really good tip I got from my instructor, and I didn't follow, but some people did, uh, was uh, that, you know, if you've got a set of mallets you really like and really like the, the sound of, then use those sparingly. Use them for performance. Uh, use them for occasional practice when you're getting near your performance. But your, you know, your rote, uh, just working on scales and exercises and things like that and working out a piece, uh, buy a nice set of soft, you know, inexpensive soft rubber mallets that you can play on, you know, on a marimba. If you're just running scales, if you're just running exercises, you don't really need to worry uh, massively about your sound. You're not talking about a final performance piece. Then, yeah, don't worry about it. Do yourself a favor, get some cheap soft mallets soft rubber. Now these are starting to kind of come together as far as a mallet should, I think. I'm going to go a couple more rounds because I want to see how big I can make it. Plus, I need to start filling in some more of these gaps. I know it's tough for you to see them, but I'm starting to see some gaps. Let me see if I can show you, like, right in here. I can't tell the contrast on this video. Maybe it's not very good. But, like, right in there, right in here, there. Yes, we are in late fall, and it's uh, near Detroit, so you can hear my furnace kick on. I hope that's okay. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about what I got. The way I'm gonna go test, and the way I would stop this anyway, even if I was sure where I was gonna go, uh, what I was gonna do, is I am going to wrap it hard around the base about 10 times. And this is just kind of like a stop cap. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that's just kind of my, you know, that's gonna hold it hard enough to, you know, keep it where it needs to be. Now I'm gonna get up and go test this over on the marimba. Yes, I really, really like that sound. I went about half off on my tight at the bottom. We're going to cut that. Don't worry about it too much. I could have just left it, honestly. And if you were, going to do this next step, you could, with the same color, you could just leave it attached. Uh, but 
we're not going to worry about that right now. So what we're gonna use for this other one is uh, this flat black um, thinner core, thinner gauge. I don't know how you uh, call it in yarn. I should look that up too, but I'm not going to. Um, to serve for my crown and foot. So this is much thinner. It doesn't have to be. You can use the exact same uh, string, the exact same yarn, and you can do it on the same length. You just have to make sure that you've got a couple feet worth uh, extra, and then you would cut it you know, off of here, thread your needle. What I'm going to do is uh, the same thing. I'm just gonna put this on and tie a knot behind it. I am going to do my crown first. Uh, I don't know that it matters what you do first. I've always done the crown first. Uh, I'm gonna start by just making uh, some tiny loops near the top. You wanna try and keep this as perfectly around as you can. Sometimes I've done these and they've ended up super, super lopsided, um, you know, but you just wanna be nice and round. Uh, around the top. So again, when you go in, you want that knot kind of at the back, because that back is the part that's going to catch on the uh, on the string. You want to grab just three or four, you know, kind of kind of dig in, get somewhere near the top. I'm going, I don't know, is that a centimeter from the top? Maybe a little less. You know, it's not. And this first couple, it's gonna, you know, it might not really want to catch. So just. Uh, you know, make sure it catches. Go back all the way. I usually make a full loop, so I go back and enter at the same spot um, and, and, and kind of come back through, especially for that first one, okay? As I come back through, I kind of knot my loop. I send it back through that same hole, and every time I make one of these, uh, oh, my top is, my bottom has come undone here. So let's tighten that. Each time I do this, first off, my, my bottom, what I was saying here is that this part, this loop down here was starting to come undone. So these top parts are kind of coming off. Okay, so I'm gonna take this back over the top. It's tough to see what I'm doing, but basically I'm just re-looping my last couple loops here and then just tightening it up at the bottom. I'm gonna take this and knot it back into itself so it doesn't come undone. So all I'm doing, on a spare needle that I have. And run it right back into itself. Bam. Tied. Not gonna be an issue now. Okay. Now, every time you run this back in, grab a little bit more. You grab it back through itself, okay? So every time you grab another little section, you run it back through the same, you run it back through the last loop you made. Okay. I'm starting to migrate upwards a little bit. I need to try and migrate a little bit back down. We'll see how uneven these end up at the end. So that's a perfect example to show right there. If you can see that, I can't quite tell. But you see how there's my loop and I'm coming back from over here, and I'm trying to pitch it back down a little bit, and I'm grabbing that last loop. Ooh, that one's a little bit ugly. We're gonna kind of try and correct that. And again, I've got some that are slipping off the top here, but I'm grabbing them as I go, so it's not that big of a deal. We're also gonna do something else in a second here that will kind of solidify the top even more. So I definitely should have grabbed a different color, I think, as opposed to the black, but as you can see, hopefully, I've got this this loop right there. Can you see it? Yeah, I've got a black loop around the top now. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come, now that we've closed that loop and we've pulled it tight, we come straight down through the top, through the center top part, center top part. <laughs> and pull straight down around the bottom uh, loop that you created. So that that headpiece part of the crown that you created as you went straight around, and now you loop from the top down through just below that. And you go all the way around. And you'll see what this does as you get around. It'll pull it more into that traditional crown-looking shape at the top.
So I've had this weird thing happen, and this is totally okay that this happened, uh, but I lost my um, uh, my tail in here. So the, the tail from the, the yarn that you normally have is now caught somewhere in this knot. That's okay. If you have any sort of issue at the top, it's totally okay. You don't have to undo it. Just cut it. In fact, I'm gonna leave this in. This this will be fine where I'm at. Um, but you know, if this was sticking out in some sort of weird loop, which it almost was, but I fixed it, uh, you know, I could just cut it and start a new piece in at the top. It's really okay. It's all just bound up up there. And that's what you want. You want it bound and tight. So when you're done, you can just kind of loop it back through one of them, and you can cut it off. See that? And then, just going to, bam. And then we're good, okay? Same thing's gonna happen right here. I'm gonna cut that off in a second. But uh, if I still had length, which I kind of did, but I lost it because of my loop issue, uh, I would just come down to the bottom and start doing a footer, and we'll do the footer in a second here. Cut another length of string, or keep the same length of string, like I said, come down do a footer. When I do a footer, I start here, come in, and again, this could be just looping from here down through there or putting it straight through underneath so that you don't see the string come through. Uh, and then you just kind of come through to the bottom, get out where you can. Sometimes these ones are hard to grab. Uh, we'll get those in a second, okay? We are now through, uh, and I'm going to kind of come up from underneath right here, underneath of all of these. And this, this gets tight, and this gets tougher to do because you're working against the, the shaft of the mallet. But you just kind of pull up and through. Careful, sometimes it's easier to knot down here. And I just keep coming up through the bottom and loop around the same way. These ones get harder to pull. Um, you know, it can make your fingers hurt. Uh, try and get a, you know, again, a smaller needle will hurt less. Sorry, a bigger needle will hurt, will hurt less, but you're still gonna be pushing on stuff. If you're a washboard player, maybe grabbing some of them thimbles wouldn't be a bad idea. So I tend to do my footers in reverse order from the top where I go to that, you know, I grab from the bottom first and pull up, and now I'm gonna go through and uh, do the same uh, thing where I go back through and loop and grab. And so now that, oh, it just died. Okay, so that one just died. So let me show you uh, right here on the GoPro. When I'm finishing that last tie, what I do, and this is what I would have done on the top if I hadn't run out, uh, if I hadn't got my middle part caught, is I slip it back through here. All right, and I pull like that, and there. There's a knot right where the string comes out. I cut it here. Got it any place that I've got extra little string coming out. Um, and there we go. Again, the bottom, not nearly as nice looking as the top because I tried to rush the top. Not the most pretty looking knot either, but it's definitely better. It's more crowned, you know? I'm gonna go over test this. I'm gonna charge my cameras, and then we're gonna do the other mallet. The other mallet, I will talk much less. I will just kind of do it, and you'll see it, and then we'll test them together, okay? Cool. One new one, one Marumba 1DH3 or whatever it is. So a little harder than these, but still, I like the tone of this. We are back, it's a little later in the day. We are done with one mallet, we're going for the next mallet. Hopefully I'll only be stopping uh, here or there to tell you, uh, you know, some small things. The big thing I'm gonna be doing as I go through is I'm just gonna be comparing it, you know, step by step to uh, the finished mallet to try and make it as much like that mallet as possible. So, here I go. I'm gonna go a couple more wraps because the crown pulls it a little tighter, so I wanna go a little bigger. I think we're just about there. We'll also go test it. So they sound pretty even to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up. To avoid the issue I ran into last time, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this off right now. I'm gonna pop it in here, make myself a little loop, come through it, I 
just making a little tie. Get out of here, we don't need you anymore. This dough can come back. By sending through, pulling through there, bam. And cut that off right there. My remnant is not long enough to use for my foot. I'm gonna cut off my little tags there and there. And let's get a new section for the foot. And again, a final tie off. mallets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, set of mallets. Let's go listen to what they sound like, but that's basically it. Like I said, I am not a master mallet rapper, uh, but this is something that's helped me out a lot throughout the years. I've done it a fair amount. Uh, and this is kind of the, like I said, the quick and easy way. If you want to get really good at this, you will make them much nicer than I do. I'm sure there's people out there that have some great techniques. If you are someone who, you know, can, can make really good mallets and have some good tips, let us know. Um, yeah, so uh, let me know if you like this. Uh, yeah, you can do the whole, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let's hit it.